Dr. Carlton Erickson, esteemed professor of pharmacology at the University of Texas at Austin, is here today to have a conversation about the effects of drugs and alcohol in our brain. I'd like to begin by asking you to do something goofy with me just for a moment. Could you take two fingers and put them in the middle of your forehead and put another one above your right or left ear? And yeah, you there in the middle. Yeah, you too. Everybody needs to do this. Okay. Now imagine where those lines cross in the middle of your brain. That's called the pleasure pathway. And all the drugs that we're going to be talking about today work on this pathway. We're going to talk about a number of different classifications of drugs today. Central nervous system or CNS depressants are one category and this is characterized by a drug like alcohol. We're also going to talk about central nervous system stimulants, for example cocaine. We're also going to talk about drugs falling into neither the stimulant or the depressant category. This would be a drug like marijuana. And then finally we're going to talk about other drugs that are abused that you might be interested in. So first of all let's talk about the drugs that are a major concern in the state. These include alcohol, marijuana, heroin, crack cocaine, powder cocaine, methamphetamine, ecstasy, PCP, and lastly, prescription drugs, which would include, first of all, why do people use CNS drugs? Generally for three reasons. For therapeutic reasons, for example, weight loss, anxiety, or insomnia treatment. Secondly, recreational use to get perhaps euphoria or high to get some insight or to relieve suffering. Recreational drugs used here would be alcohol and marijuana. And thirdly, people use CNS drugs because of addiction. And this is where you start using a drug and then you get into a situation where you can't stop. And we're going to be talking about that at the end of the presentation. Take a look at this brain. You see the brain, the, the front of the brain is on the left, the back of the brain is on the right, the blue pathway in the middle, going from the middle of the brain to the front of the brain, is what you were pointing at a few minutes ago. That's known as the pl brain's pleasure pathway, or also called the reward pathway, and it has the scientific name of mesolimbic dopamine system. I know that's a lot of words and big words to say, but it essentially means that they have identified exactly where the brain area is where these drugs work. In a normal brain, when you experience pleasure, such as from taking a drug, or maybe having a birthday or a wedding, that the nerve impulses run from the center of the brain near where it's labeled the ventral tegmental area forward through the brain through the nucleus accumbens which is where we can measure most, most of the dopamine that's being released and then up to the front part of the brain known as the frontal and prefrontal cortex. So when these drugs work or when this pleasurable experience occurs this pathway fires and it's interpreted in the frontal lobes as pleasure. It's not all about the mesolimbic dopamine system as a pathway. What we really have to talk about is what's going on inside that pathway and we talk about it at the cell level. So I know that most of us have forgotten our physiology or maybe we never had it. So if it's okay with you, I'd like to treat you as if you're eighth graders just for a little while. Is that okay? All right, I didn't think you'd mind. So let's talk kids about how the brain cells talk to one another through chemistry. There are billions of these nerve cells in the brain and here in this picture we have just two of them. The one on the top is called nerve cell number one. The one, one on the bottom is called nerve cell number two. Inside nerve cell number one you see the business end where a lot of different things are going on and this is at the end of a sending fiber at the left side of the screen inside the cell body are manufacturing enzymes for chemicals known as neurotransmitters. These neurotransmitters pass down the fiber under the influence of an action potential which is depicted as a lightning bolt. These neurotransmitters are packaged in what look like cellophane envelopes called vesicles. These vesicles dump their contents into the space between the two nerve cells. One of four things can happen to these neurotransmitters. Either they activate the excitatory receptor on the left side of nerve cell number two. When that is activated, it makes nerve cell number two be more likely to fire. Or the neurotransmitter may activate an inhibitory receptor in the middle of nerve cell number two. When that happens, nerve cell number two is less likely to fire. 
or the neurotransmitters can be gobbled up by a monster enzyme on the right-hand side of nerve cell number two. This is